create the mud. Hmm. Okay. They do so that a lot like in a Dallas. Pseudo utility. Yeah. I'm sorry. I said so. It's almost uh, as if uh, the park would act as a pseudo utility for wastewater. It, yeah, it could, and you could actually size it to accommodate the properties around the perimeter. The, oh, there, that's cool. Yeah, there's a couple of ways to handle it. One of the ways is to go that route. The other rent way would be to enlist Eastern Central as your utility and have them fund the construction because you're going to give them fees from a certain number of users. That would probably be uh, better for me because it would offload a lot of the maintenance and upkeep expenses. Uh, Always. Such as utility. A hundred percent. Yes. I, 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 again, even if you were to create the mud, I would still enlist the utility district to, uh, to basically own and maintain the plant. Okay, but that does sound like, uh, and this is backing in because uh, I've looked at trailer park properties elsewhere, and I've been getting a lot of resistance from cities. You're, well, it sounds as if the city of Elmendorf uh, is really endorsing a project right there. Well, is that true with the, the city regulators? Here's, here's the here's the issue. Well, this piece is actually in the San Antonio ETJ, not Elmendorf. Ah, the. There is another, there are several other trailer parks. If you go on Google Earth and go up by 181, just to the south and west of this property, Tom. and zoom in real close, you'll see them. And it's, it's, it blows my mind, but a couple, there's, there's, a, there's several stick-built projects that connect directly to three trailer parks. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I've actually called. I, I have called no idea. Yeah. Sorry. I'll be, yeah, I'll be honest. I have no idea what they're called, Sam. <laughs> oh, well, no, I was going to go with uh, building on your point of, because I've called the uh, Bear County Zoning Board, yeah. and they said that very, like, up until recently, they basically just denied all trailer park applications until about a year or so ago, when now they're issuing permits for them. So if it's in San Antonio, that guy, since he was Bear County, couldn't speak for San Antonio, but he did say that the city of San Antonio is kind of loosening up their restrictions too. Because I know well, services well, of hard well, pass. Well, here's what I think happened. To be real honest, and here's where I, I I'm like a student of zoning ordinances. I've been doing this since 1988, and uh, and in, and I I've got jobs in in Virginia. I lived in Virginia for 30 years. I've got jobs in Northeast Florida. I've been everywhere the Navy's been, and, uh, <laughs> really. uh, and, uh, and, and now we're in Texas, and the interesting thing is, I think what might have happened in, in Bejar and San Antonio is they, uh, they, they, they'll, get, they'll get suited for, uh, uh, they, they call it spot zoning. You can't have 2,500 trailer parks and then go, hey, guess what? We don't want any more. We don't want any more trailer parks. Well, are you being exclusionary to me specifically because there's nothing in your ordinance that prohibits it? And my guess is somebody came in to the, into San Antonio and the ETJ and said, uh, I'd be more than happy to take your money in a lawsuit. Hmm. Well, uh, yeah. Because... Because zoning issues are uh, they're always fun, but but all the conversations I've had, there's no prohibition of it. Okay, that's good. Um, and the the other end of this is with the the instance, and I and I get where you're coming from, mobile homes. I, I like to think of it as manufactured housing. Um, yeah, I, I used to live in them, so I I, I call them just trailer parks. Uh, yeah, but yeah, mobile, mobile homes would be the uh, manufactured homes, I guess, would be the politically correct term. Correct, yeah, exactly. And these days, since everything, 90% of every home that's framed is built in a factory and shipped to site, <laughs> and they can call it stick-built, but they stack them up in a couple of days. And I, I, in my opinion, it's no different than a manufactured home that they roll out onto the site and make it work. <laughs> 
Hmm. Yeah, this is getting the uh, city to agree for that sort of zoning because I would be open if these sites, if, if there was a, because you do have a very nice, uh, nicely packaged uh, project right there. I, I wouldn't be opposed to looking at it from, say, a manufactured home standpoint uh, because I think that would be another economical option for housing over there. Uh, but my, my target is definitely trailers. So okay. that, that's what I'd like to build out there because it's definitely easier and faster to build them. Okay. And, and again, I, I don't know the difference between a trailer and a manufactured home personally, but they, they, they kind of look the same to me. I'm sorry, what was that? I said you drag it out to the site and plop it on a pad. Same yeah, thing. I, I, again, it, 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 it all depends on how big you pour the concrete pad that you're rolling it on. Uh, mm -hmm. Is it going to be, uh, and again, I don't know what the what the delta is. I know what the travel width is, 15 feet, 9 inches is the max you can roll down the road. So uh, I would guess a double wide then is, uh, what, 29 feet? <laughs> yeah, they usually split yeah, the two single wides. So yeah. 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 Uh, you know, so that's where you get your, you, that's where you'd have your 40 foot lot, 5 foot side yards and and enough to, uh, uh, enough to set your units. But, but again, that's, <laughs> Excuse me. I think that's the, uh, the the basic idea is somewhere between you know a mix of 30 and 40 foot wide lots that, that or, or smaller if you're doing single wides that that uh, that make it work uh, from a from an efficiency of layout standpoint. I think what I've sketched is you're not going to get much more efficient. Um, again, we can uh, you can shorten the depths and add a few more connecting roads uh, to create the uh, the 75 foot depth versus the 125 foot because every every extra row you're going to pick up another uh, another uh, double row of uh, of lots. Well, it certainly looks like you've used the uh, the space efficiently. Uh, I, I probably wouldn't. Uh, there'd only be minor changes. I would th I would think from uh, the drawings you have keeping that because it does look like your other uh, rows are laid out really nice uh, there's not a lot of um, bunching up it looks like it looks very efficient use of space there's enough variation so it because I know with subdivisions where they want uh, they don't like grid patterns they like little winding rows and stuff so it looks like you're, you're fitting in with that I like your drawing as, as is cool. for the size changes yeah if we Again, I think, that, like I said I think we can uh, we can certainly ratchet it down and increase the yield to get you where you need to be um, yield wise what do you think you need yes. to make the numbers work uh, well I'll have to run them again because I have them I have them all on Excel sheet uh, yep. I'll run them at 220 225 but I wasn't able to get them to work at 176 right um, because lot rent in that particular area I it's not it's not very high um, okay but then there's also the possibility of dropping trailers on here to just sell them as, as individual lots as well so I do yeah. like the project your project is if we do that route where we just drop a trailer on and sell it like you said it's you know about 0 0.2 uh, 0.15 somewhere in that range uh, for each lot dropping a trailer on that should get just or just shy of the Average uh, home price in Elmendorf, or just under, really, and I can get the number for even uh, twenty thousand beneath that price. The numbers still work. So I'm what are those? Uh, what are the numbers in Elmendorf? Because I know what I know. Ralph Coleman's doing a, a, a maybe give those guys a Google. They're the selling. Average, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, the average uh, home sale price that I could find for Elmendorf it varies across all separate platforms, but I ran yeah. the lowest numbers to remain conservative. And I yeah. saw 155,000 uh, sales price. Yeah, so I was just, it, I was running all of my numbers at 145, and it still worked even below the average. And I think I think depending on what you're slipping in there, Sam, you're looking north of 200. The Rouse Coleman's doing 40 foot lots. Just uh, if you and, and get, again, seriously, give them a Google. They're uh, they love this area. They looked at this site, uh, and I'm still talking to them. They uh, they like the 40 foot wide lots, like everybody else. They have a uh, they have a 20 28 foot wide product that they put on it, and they're 
their starting prices are, I want to say it's 249 and they have a project just to the south of South Foster's Connection at 181. They have, they have two projects there that they're okay. working on. And uh, again, I, I think I think Elmendorf, it's funny, it, Texas is a funny place. Uh, sure they're, is. they're a little further, I want to say, and it's not that much further east, but they're further east, further than the city, you know, they're, they're, they're further outside San Antonio, and I, I, I see the prices uh, rolling down from there. My estimations on, you know, on a fully developed lot in in this area was, uh, I, you, you could do, I could be selling fully developed lots somewhere between sixty and seventy five thousand a lot, and the builders would take that, and that works with their that, that number works with their base number, which starts at about two forty nine. Okay. Okay. So there's definitely options for this pro for this project, which leads me into the next question of: uh, You have a very nice pro project that's here. You've already got the arterial roadway situation taken care of. Looks like the city with the wastewater and even that mud that you just described. Um, yes. All these utilities uh, connections and all this. What uh, stopped you from developing this yourself? Because you do have a very nice, uh, nicely packaged uh, project here. No, nothing has stopped us yet. We're in the initial phases. I, I'm like every other uh, 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 guy out there. We 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 buy the land based on you know the factors that drive it, which you've basically come up with. I do my initial planning. Uh, we I, I talk to. I've got relationships with all the national builders. Uh, I don't have a whole lot of relation. I'm, I'm learning Texas. I'll, I'll be frank. I, uh, I spent 30 years developing, finding land and developing it in northern Virginia, just outside DC. I've been, uh, I've been in northeast Florida now. I was, I was actually born and raised in Pensacola, Florida. I made my way back to Florida. We're in northeast Florida. I've got four projects here that I'm working on. And I had uh, a, a friend and associate go, "Hey, what do you know about Texas?" And I went, "It's land development. It, it's not. It's not rocket science." Uh, yeah, there's a lot of land here to develop too. There, there is, but it's but it's all about you know. And I think you've kind of figured out the niche. It's all about finding the right piece in the right location that, that actually has the potential to uh, uh, to be developed and. In my mind, looking at this piece, it really did. Um, so, we the reason we haven't done anything yet is we're, we're really in the early parts of what I do, no matter what, which is which is see if see if it might make more sense to someone else to step in. Would they step in if we do some light entitlement work? What are they? What what's the market looking for? They're, they're just all those kind of questions that, that come up, uh, you know, when you're when you're looking to be in this industry. So okay. it's we haven't ruled that out yet, but you know, when when Chad reached out, and I'll be honest, I I have a soft spot for uh, you know for you guys in the Navy. So uh, I, I was I welcomed the opportunity to chat with you about this and would. Uh, would would love the opportunity to uh, to help you recognize this dream. Well, thank you for your consideration. And uh, yeah. actually, I've, I'm I'm am a civilian now, but I still work ah. on government ships. I mean, ah, I, I actually you, just yeah, I just got off a uh, government ship, like a USNS ship, a week and a half ago, and I'm the medical okay. officer on that ship. So it's I'm trying to realize this while I'm um, so that I can transition from that okay. into a developer. Ah, oh, good for you. Good for you. Well, and again, you know, this is, uh, like I said, this is, uh, to me, this is a, like a great, I mean, it's a little big for a starter project, but it's a good starter project for what you're, for the angles that you're looking at, because it does have a lot of possibility. It's, it's actually got a great possibility of being a two-phase kind of thing, where if you started on the north side of Cassiano, you, you could do something on the south side 
uh, that mirrors it, that's different. Uh, you can stick build one side. You could uh, you could do your uh, your manufactured stuff on the north side. It, it really does have a lot of opportunity. Oh, absolutely, and that's what tra attracted me so much to this particular project that you have here is that you've yeah. done a lot of stuff for me already. So I believe this that that land will work excellently. It's not like I'm starting from scratch. You've done a you've done a lot there, and as you've mentioned, you're willing to extend um, some further assistance down the road. Oh yeah. So it's so yeah. So this, I think this would be great, and I'm I'm very eager to uh, begin looking into this further. Please and I definitely appreciate what you've mentioned so far. Yeah, and I'm I'm available to talk. Uh, you know, as I told Chad, I'm I'm, uh, I'm I'm my own guy. I make my own schedule, so uh, I'm available pretty much at any time. If you uh, if you have any questions, you need anything, uh, any additional info, I'd be happy to uh, I'd be happy to provide you with anything uh, I've got and can provide you with. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. These uh, a lot of those. Pro uh, Questions we've been going back and forth, like with the, is it a flood plains? So the nope. big one that I was worried about was, am I buying someone's um, failed project? Or nope. uh, and are they trying to, and you've made it very clear that it is not. You're just trying to look at it from different lens of would it be better to pass this project off and make a money in the front end versus seeing it to completion. So there you I, go. See, I can see where you're going with that. Yeah, so, that, that, is, that, is, that is it in a nutshell. I, uh, my, my associate on this, is is I, although he's done some speculative things, he's a newbie land guy. I've been doing this for years, and you know, I and I've explained to him my my associate's name's David Amache. I told David, I'm like David, you know, maybe this is a good one to uh, get a few things teed up for somebody and let them take it down the process and. Of course, he's like, no, no, we should do it. I'm like, I, you know, it's this is a this is a big, it's a it's a pretty big project. All said, it's yeah. it, there's a lot of moving parts uh, when you get up to, you know, several hundred lots with uh, with infrastructure and everything, um, and it takes a lot of uh, a lot of focus and 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 diligence to get it to get it through the process and get it built and and start moving it. But from a absolutely from a from a cost standpoint, the, the, you know it's it's priced right. It's not overpriced. We're not trying to gouge anyone, uh, and and it performs. Um, and again, I think for you, it can perform at any number of levels. And I'll tell you this: I I talked to a couple of guys who uh, who who uh, say that area would work on half acre lots. With uh, with septic, and you don't even need to do the uh, you don't even need to do the treatment. And for that, uh, because he goes there, uh, one of the builders I was talking to said there are people out there that would love a half acre lot that close to that lake where they could store their their RV and their boat, and they need a half acre to do that. Hmm. That's something to keep in mind as well. Yeah, it yields, it'll yield about 65 half-acre lots. Okay. Comfortably. Mm. And I have a sketch for that, too. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'll definitely keep that one in mind. So I, I'm, yeah. I'm writing notes as we're going here. Yeah. Mm. So, yeah, if you, again, if you think of any questions, if you have them, you can run through chat. You can, uh, we can start an email thing. Uh, I'd be happy to answer any questions you have. Okay. Um, yeah, that was, those, those were the main questions that I had, uh, like the main high-level questions that I had at this point. And I'm, I'm definitely um, eager to move forward and discuss, uh, you know, further down the line with uh, possibly acquiring this thing. Uh, you know, I'm perhaps getting it running myself, you know. You said there's a few of them there. So um, I definitely appreciate your time and your information for this project. Anytime, sir. Yeah, thank you. Um, and would you recommend, is there like a good resource to look up the process of getting a mud started? I'm not familiar uh, with that too much over yeah. here. God love Al Gore and the fantastic internet. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I always like to throw that out there. Okay. Uh, honest to God, Google Texas 
M U D. Right. That's all caps, and it will pop up. Okay. It is uh, it is a readily available process. Not a whole lot of people know about it. It's very funny that they don't. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. And but I tell you what, if, if you look around, there are a lot of them in Texas. It is basically. I don't know how to simplify it, but you bring in someone like a Morgan Stanley, they value bonds, they sell bonds to high net worth people on the open market with with guaranteed returns, and guys scoop up their A-rated bonds that mm-hmm. are issued for, for a MUD or for a CDD in Florida, um, and basically it, it covers the cost of uh, uh, a, a significant portion of the cost to develop a site. Wow. Up to half. Okay. Okay. Interesting. And then basically the and then basically the 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 lot purchaser in the case of that or in this case it, it makes it a little more dicey with the rental thing, although it's still possible. Um, it just it makes it a little less attractive. Because Sam, that it's kind of coming out of your pocket, although it's, or you, although you're recycling it with funds that you're bringing in on rent, but uh, but mm. the, the 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 bonus is it's usually set up on uh, linear feet of frontage cost yearly, and, uh, and and that's how the bonds are repaid. Bonds are usually repaid over. You know, uh, it, I, they got bond terms, 15 years, 18 years, 30 years. Um, but that's how they go. But, yeah, Chad, if, if, you okay. just, if you just Google a Texas mud, it will pop right up. Yep, sounds good. Okay, cool. Um, okay. Yeah, anything else, Sam? What are you thinking? Uh, at this point, uh, all of those high-level questions are answered. Um I can take a closer look at it now that I now that I have that answered, and I can get more specific questions later. But of course, I can route that uh, through you then, and we can call you again another time, David. Oh, anytime, anytime. We'd love to help you guys. Thank you. Yeah, I'll, All right, I'll... you're very welcome. Sam, pleasure speaking with you. You as well, and th- thank you for your information. All right, anytime, guys. Take care. Chad, take care. Take care. You too. Thanks, David. All right. Bye. Bye. Stop.